In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a Photoshop feature that I think is probably a little bit underused by designers, and it's called Selective Color. So much like Hue Saturation, for example, Selective Color allows you to change the overall color scope of a given image, but it has much more granular control to it. So if you want to change very specific colors within an image, that's where something like Selective Color will really outshine something like Hue and Saturation. So I have three different examples here to kind of show a few different possible use scenarios for something like Selective Color of color and just to kind of go over these how I would use them and hopefully just give you a little bit more exposure into how selective color works so to get to selective color you want to go to image and then adjustments and then kind of near the bottom here it's called selective color just below gradient map and just above shadow and highlights so I'm gonna hit that very quickly you're gonna make sure that the preview box is checked right here so you can see your changes as they happen and just very quickly there's two different methods to selective color there's relative and then absolute so I'll say that almost all the time you're going to want to use relative if you're looking for realistic effects because it just tends to have much more realistic output than absolute. And I had to read on the Adobe site the actual difference of relative versus absolute. So as a quick example, let's say this Porsche right here is 50% magenta, which looking at this, I know it's not 50% magenta, but it's easier to explain this way. If I add in an additional 10% magenta, it'll actually end up adding in 5% magenta because 10% of the original 50% is in fact 5%. And also something to kind of note here is it won't affect the pure whites at all, which is what will really add to making this look a bit more realistic, whereas absolute will add an absolute value to whatever the original value was. So if it was 50% magenta and you add 10%, you're now at 60% instead of 55 like relative would have done. So that's the technical difference between the two, but what I'll say is just probably you're going to want to use relative almost all the time unless you're really trying to make some very substantial changes to your image that include the pure whites. So up at the top here there are some colors and that's where you really make the individual color adjustments. So just for example on this particular image you could hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac and just bring up hue saturation to adjust the color of this car very quickly. But let's say you want to do something kind of different here and adjust the color of the background. That's where using something like hue saturation would be a bit of a pain. So now I'm going to go back to image adjustments and then selective color here and from the colors drop down you just want to select the color that you think most closely matches what you're going to want to change. In this case it is the neutrals. So I have this box of preview checked right here and then you can just start adjusting the cyan, magenta, yellow and black percentages of your image to kind of change how this looks. So what I tend to do is I just start moving these back and forth and seeing how they affect the overall image here. And I should note that this original image is extremely heavily photoshopped as it is. So this is kind of an interesting example to use for that particular reason. But as you can tell, it's very easy to go in here and start making some fairly substantial changes to your overall image by adjusting these things. And it's also worth noting that neutrals in general will tend to affect almost everything since there's a lot of neutral colors even in something as saturated as this Porsche right here. So now I've adjusted the background color. If I want to adjust the color of the Porsche itself, I can go back to colors, this drop down right here, and this is an orange car, but red is probably the closest approximate color, although it's very clear there's a lot of yellow in here too. So I'm gonna select reds and just move these around a little bit until I adjust the color of the car to something that I find to be a bit different, at least for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm just gonna keep on sliding these back and forth until I get an end result that I think is kind of neat. So right here, if I click this preview box off, you can see the original image versus the new one that we've created and since now there's an overwhelming amount of yellows in here I can go to colors and then bring up yellows and start making fine-tune adjustments to these yellows as well in this case it's much more subtle but if I go all the way over here you can tell this is a much more actual mustardy kind of yellow color and if I push it all the way to this side it becomes much more orange once again so you can just flip back and forth through these knowing that as you make changes to one you can go and make changes to another one to continue to make the those effects across everything. If I want to make changes to let's say the color of the lights right here we can go to the whites and start adjusting these colors to make some very subtle tints to these. So in this case it has almost a purplish tint to the white lights that are around the car here. So let's say you made this car a purple color you could then go in here and make those changes. So if I once again just 
quick on and off preview, you can tell that it made a very substantial difference to this car and then the background of the car, all while giving you a whole bunch of control of it. So I'm just gonna hit back on this one and go to our next example here, because let's say you have something like this where you just wanna change the color of these oranges, which using hue and saturation would be a pretty big pain to do. So I'm gonna go to image and then adjustments and then back to selective color right here. In this case, we're gonna adjust the reds because that is the most appropriate color here for these oranges. I would also say there's a lot of yellow in here, but there's a ton of yellow in these leaves. So if you adjust the yellow, the leaves are what's really gonna be affected the most. So we'll start with reds. And I just go through here and start making some adjustments. So as you can tell, if I go all the way to the left here, these oranges become a bit brighter. And if I go all the way to the right on this cyan, they become a bit darker. So I just kind of flip back and forth between these different settings right here until you get a result that is closely matching what you're looking for. So in this case, I turned these oranges into what looks like almost a Granny Smith apple or a green apple, something like that. So then I can go over to the yellows right here and start making some adjustments that'll have a pretty big effect on these leaves. So this is at, let's see, 0% right here if I just type that in, where these leaves have a pretty pronounced yellow color to them. And as I push the cyan to a much larger value, it really brings some life into these leaves and makes them look a bit more green, which I think is actually a pretty cool effect for what we're doing right here. So as you can see right here, it's very quick to make pretty powerful changes to the overall look of your image with just a few small adjustments to these sliders and sort of carefully choosing what colors you're manipulating. So if I go to neutrals here and start making some adjustments, as you can tell, this really affects the entire image as there's quite a few different neutrals here to pick from. So I'll just kind of quickly make some changes right here so you can kind of see what's going on and then I'll leave black at zero. As you would probably expect, black has a huge effect on the lightness and the darkness of your image. So that's really if you want to pump up the contrast or kind of saturate things a little bit, adjusting the black value will be the most useful. Once again, I'll just check preview on and off right here. So you can see that there's a fairly substantial difference in the image and we had a ton of control across all these different colors. So I think that's a pretty cool end result that was very quick to achieve using selective color. And on this third image, we have a very vibrant image with lots of color in it. So in this case, when we adjust any one color, it's gonna have a lot of effects on everything else around it, more so than the previous images, just because there are so many different color blends in this one. So I'm going to go back to image and then to adjustments right here at the top. And then we go back down to selective color. So let's say I want to adjust the color of these red peppers right here. So we'll just stick into reds. But as I adjust this, you can tell it's not only changing the color of the red peppers, but also the bowl that the peppers are in as there's quite a bit of red in this bowl, even though it's a brown, it is a mix of colors. So as you adjust one, it kind of has a pronounced effect on everything here. So I'm just going to keep on slightly moving around here and bringing these red peppers to be a bit more purple in color. Once again, we can use that black to either punch them really dark, and in this case, it makes a much darker red color than the original. If I flip on and off this, you can kind of see that effect. Or if I bring this black down lower, it becomes a much lighter and kind of almost a desaturated look to it. So then you can just go down through these various options and start playing around with it and kind of seeing how it affects your image. And then you can adjust it to either how you do or don't like it. I tend to just quickly go through a bunch of different colors here and flip around on the different options for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black until the end result closely resembles what I'm trying to achieve. In this case, we're on greens, and since the greens are so localized to these leaves, as well as, what is this, a uh, green pepper, I think, it tends to affect those much more than anything else around it. So in this one in particular, you can really see the effect that you have on the greens because that color is so much more localized. And like I said before, if you wanna adjust everything just a little bit, go down to neutrals, is that will tend to have a pretty sweeping effect on your image as a whole, as there are a ton of neutral colors in pretty much any image that you are going to be working inside. So if I quickly flip off that preview and look at the original, you can see that although the effect is somewhat subtle, it is very pronounced and that we have changed the overall tone of the image quite a bit very quickly here. But if I flip this over from relative to absolute, you can tell that it has a much more pronounced effect on how this looks. I'll just switch back to relative and then to absolute as it's really having a much bigger effect on some of these lighter elements here and how the color is kind of spreading throughout them. And that's where I say relative is the most realistic way of going about this. But if you wanna have a super pronounced effect and if you really wanna hit your images with a very different color feel, then play around with absolute and see how it works. You might get some pretty interesting effects that way. And once again, I'll just quickly flip on and off this preview so you can see that change. And that's pretty much the end of this tutorial now. So like I said before, selective color is a very granular way to control color. It gives you a ton of flexibility since you can 
choose what colors you want to affect the most. Those color choices will likely bleed in with some other colors where they're prevalent, but it will always affect that most prominent color like with those greens of these peppers and leaves the most, which is why it makes this such a cool tool because it gives you a ton of flexibility when you want to go in there and adjust what you're working on. So I hope you found this little tip helpful, and if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming your way for designers and illustrators. Thanks so much for watching.